Today, I'm gonna to show you how we can build a really simple chat app with NAN and Pinecone to chat with any amount of PDFs. With this method, you can literally add thousands of PDFs as long as they're not as long as the Bible and use Pinecone's vector database to query all of them. If you're not familiar with NAN and Pinecone, NAN is basically a Zapier or make.com alternative, which allows us to self-host our own automation sequences. And Pinecone is a vector database tool that will allow us to store our data documents so we can use things like ChatGPT and OpenAI to actually make requests on those databases and fetch any kind of information and use it in our responses. This is pretty much a fully custom solution so it's better than 99% of the ChatGPT PDF retrieval apps out there and you can customize this to work with pretty much whatever you want. Because NAN allows you to hook up to things like Twilio or WhatsApp or SMS or email, you can basically build your own custom autoresponder off of a knowledge base. Before we get into it, if you want to work with me in any kind of AI or automations project, make sure to book a free time with me in the down description below. We can talk about building a SaaS, some automation workflows, chatbots, AI models, you name it. But anyway, enough talking, let's get into the video. So as I mentioned, we're going to be using NAN to build out this really simple pinecone automation. If you don't know what NAN is, it's basically a Zapier or make.com alternative, like I was saying, and it allows us to hook up different services through through an API so they can talk to each other and we can run full automations and do really, really cool stuff. I have a lot of videos on my channel, including how to self host this. So you can basically run NAN completely for free and run it as many times as you want, which is one of the big selling points of using NAN. And they hook up with a ton of amazing apps that allow you to do some pretty great things. Like I was saying, it's very similar to Zapier or make.com, but it's open source and completely free. To get started with NAN, all you have to do is head over to their GitHub here. And if we scroll down here, we can just follow the simple start instructions right here to get started with NAN. If you don't already have Node.js installed, you can just click on the button here and install Node on your computer. It works for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And once you go through the installer, you'll be all set. And then all you have to do is just copy this NPX NAN. We'll come down into our Windows tab here and type in CMD or open the command terminal if you're on Mac. And then I'll just type in NPX NAN. And then it will go through and install NAN and on our local machine. I already have mine installed, so it only took like a second or two, but once you have it installed, you'll be brought to this localhost 5678 URL right here, which we can then control click on, and that will open up our local instance of NAN. It'll ask you to sign in, so just put in some credentials and get into it. And now we're inside our NAN workflow. And what we're gonna be using in order to build out this really simple chat with PDF app, all using Pinecone and vector databases, is by using this amazing template here by Robert David. So big shout out to you, but it basically allows us to hook up a Google Drive so we can input documents, put them into our vector database with Pinecone, and then chat with them using OpenAI and Langchain. That sounds like a lot of spaghetti to you. Just hang tight because I'm going to go through and explain everything. But in order to get this workflow in our NAN instance, all I'm going to do is just click on use workflow right here and copy the template to clipboard with JSON. So I'm just going to copy the template here, head back over to our workflow section here in inside NAN, I'm gonna add a new workflow and then just control V right into NAN. And now we have our new workflow here. So just off the rip here, there's a slight issue that I wanna fix. Apparently on my version of NAN, I don't have this set Google Drive file URL. So I'm just gonna delete this one and just kind of hook this up right up to our Google Drive here. But now we just wanna go through and put in our credentials to get this all to work. First, we're gonna start off with the open AI key right here. And this will be using the embeddings API, which will basically allow us to take our vector database from Pinecone with all of our PDFs and all of our documents and figure out how to best retrieve that information. So I already have a credential here, but if you don't have a credential, you can just come on over to the OpenAI website. If you log in, go to the API and then come on over to the API keys here, you can scroll down and create a new API key right here. And it'll basically give you a string of characters that starts with SK and then a long list of just random characters. You're gonna wanna take this value, come into NAN and then just put it inside of the API key field right here and then click on save. And once you get this connection tested successfully, you're ready to go. And we're going to be using the text embeddings ADA002 model for this one. So just enter it in inside that and as well as these ones over here. So the open AI model as well, I'll use the same credential. And this is going to be using the GPT 3.5 turbo model in order to give us our responses when chatting with PDFs. And then also select the embeddings model again down here. And now we 
need to install Google Drive. So now we need to hook up our Google Drive account. And for this, we're going to need to set up some credentials with our Google Cloud account. What we can do is head on over to the Google Cloud console. And if we make a new console version, we brought to something that looks similar to this. And once we're inside the console, we can come on over to our navigation, go to our APIs and services and come on to our credentials. If this is the first time using Google Console for you, make sure you add in the OAuth consent screen here. You can just go through this workflow, fill it out. And then also one more thing before we get into this, you want to make sure if we head on over to enabled APIs and services, we look for the Google Drive API and we install the latest Google Drive API right here. And we just make sure we want to enable it right here. So make sure this is enabled. And then if we come back over to our navigation in our credentials, all we have to do is just make a new OAuth2 client ID here with create credentials, OAuth client. We want to make this application web application. I'm going to name this NAN Pinecone, but you can name it whatever you want. And then we're going to want to input our redirect URI, which we got from NAN. So we want this URL right here that we just got. I'm going to copy this, head back over here, put that bad boy in there, and we should be all good to go. So now we have our client ID and our secret key. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put this in our client ID, and then I'm going to copy our secret here and then put this in our client secret. And now if all looks good, we'll get this signed into Google. So I'll just sign into Google. If it says our app hasn't been verified yet, we can just hit advanced and then go to project. We're using our own app. So of course it's going to be safe and I'll continue with this. And if all goes well, it should say account connected. And now we're all set up with Google drive. So now what we can do is we'll be able to input our URLs here in order to access our files. And in this instance, we're going to want to download our file so we can send it on over to Pinecone. So before we do that, let's jump into Pinecone. I'm going to show you how it works and what it is and how we can set it up inside of N8N. So you can head on over to Pinecone. I'll have a link down in the description below. But basically, Pinecone is a vector database service that allows us to put our documents on their vector database models so that we can use them to access information in a super easy way. They're basically, as it says here, building knowledge for AI. And the reason why you'd want to use a vector database database over something like a relational database is because vector databases allow you to search a large amount of information a lot quicker. Traditional relational databases rely on using basically like key values to store information in groups, which is great if you're trying to build things like a SAS backend or store your files, but it's not good if you're trying to search a large volume of information. Vector databases essentially store that information within a embedding number, which makes it easier to query all kinds of information and make the retrieval of our particular PDF document a lot easier and a lot faster. It's the best way to store data when you're making AI models. So I'm going to log in here. And once we're inside Pinecone, we're going to want to make a new project. So we can just head on over to the projects here and create a new project. I'm going to name this NAN files and create project. And there we go. We can click into it and we can get started. So to get started inside Pinecone, all we're going to want to do is just create a new index here. I'll create a new index and I'm going to name it NAN files. And then for our configuration, we're going to want to enter in 1536. 1536 is basically the dimension number of how to best parse the information and put it inside of our database. This is the number that is generally recommended when we're getting started. So just stick with 1536 for now. And then we'll come on down and we'll make sure we're on serverless AWS. I'm on the East Coast, so I'll just click on Virginia and create our index. And so now we have our index ready to go. Now we need our API key. We can head over to our API keys tab here. I'll copy my API key and then I'll head back over to NAN and then we'll click inside of our Pinecone node here. I'll click on select credential here, create new credential, and I'll just paste in my API key that I got from Pinecone. And there we go. Connection tested successfully. Pinecone index from list choose. We should get NAN files. Awesome. So now our Pinecone is all set up on this end. Now we just need to set it up on this read Pinecone vector here. So I'll open this up. I'll also select the same credential we just made. I'll also select NAN files and we should be all good to go. So now we can test this out. So inside my Google Drive, I have this file here of Tesla's 2023 Q4 earnings report. I just got it as a PDF for free on the internet. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to share this and I'm going to copy this link. And if I head inside of Google Drive here and then I just paste this link inside of here, we'll be good to go we'll basically be able to download this Tesla Q4 earnings PDF. And then this will be put inside of our Pinecone vector here, which then will allow us to chat with that document. I'll just 
click into the pine cone node here and I'll test this step out. And what it will do is it'll execute the Google Drive node. It'll download the data right here and then it will send it over to our pine cone instance. And we'll get this node executed successfully with this information here about how it's broken down our Tesla PDF and put it into different little pieces here, which will allow us to easily query this PDF much better than if we were using any other kind of a data storage solution. If we head back over to Pinecone here and click into our indexes, you'll notice we have some new information inside of our vector database here. We have what looks like 10 of these different IDs here with our information that has been put inside this vector database. And if we click on show 32 more, we have all the information about the PDF, including down here, some text that was inside of the PDF. So if we head back over to NAN, we can come on over to the next part and chat with our database here. So what's basically happening here is we're using this answer and question chain here as a way to query this vector store retriever, which is built off this read pine cone store model here. And this is using the embedding model down here from OpenAI. So if I were to open this up and test the chat here, we'll say, what was Tesla's Q4 earnings? If we wait just a quick second here, you'll see we get Tesla's Q4 earnings included a total revenue of 25.2 billion, operating income of 2.1 billion, and a gap net income of 7.9 billion, and some more information here. So we can directly chat with the PDF, and you'll even see it shows us it uses the vector store retriever, and then uses that to parse through our vectorized database and find the relevant information to answer our question. And what's great about this model is you can add as many files as you want or as many files as Pinecone will allow you to add through this method of upload here using the Google Drive and uploading it into Pinecone and then chat with all those documents. You can have like 100 files, you upload them all into Pinecone and then you can chat with all 100 of those documents inside of this chat window here on N8N, which is amazing. And we can even ask things like, what was Tesla doing in 2023? And and they have milestone achievements, delivering over 1.2 million Model Y vehicles, the best-selling vehicle globally. They still haven't released the Roadster. Classic Elon. But yeah, you get the idea. You can come in here and you can ask basically anything you want about this PDF. And what makes it special is we're using Pinecone and NAN to make this happen. So that's where the NAN functionality comes in and kind of what I want to demonstrate. We could take this one step further and use this question and answer chain here to sync this up to whatever kind of input we want. And what I want to show you is how we're going to do this with email. So if I come up and I add a new node and I just type in email, we're going to use an email trigger IMAP, which allows us to hook up our email directly inside of our answer and question chain here. And then we'll use a send email function right here to send our response back into email form. And then we'll also edit our query in here. So that will say, let's check this out. Respond to this question as Elon in an email format. And then we'll put inside our JSON chat input here. And now we just have to hook up our email triggers and our send email triggers. In this case, I'm going to be using a inbox I made over on Namecheap, which just cost me like 20 bucks to set up an email account. And I'm using some really simple IMAP configurations, which is basically just my business email that I made with my business email password using the mail.privateemail.com on port 9933. Port 9933 is basically going to be the universal port for receiving messages using the mail protocol here. And the private email is just what Namecheap uses in order to host their emails. But if you're using something like Google, it'll be like Google here or GoDaddy or whatever other email provider you're using. And then same thing for the send email. We're gonna be doing the same thing on an SMTP account, except in this case, we're using smtp.private email. Once again, this will be like Google or whatever else you're using and then port 465. And now what we can do is just test this email trigger out. So I'm gonna test this step and I'm gonna send an email to that Mike at Horizon Labs group. Of course, once the authentic is valid. And if we give this a test again, you'll notice it actually picks up one of the emails in my inbox here. I'm going to test this one more time and send an email from my phone. So I'm going to say test pinecone and the body says, hey, with my contact information. And look at that. We get our email right here. We get my email with the information about our email, what looks like to be, yeah, some of the metadata for our email, which is perfect. So now we can take our question answer chain here. And then we're going to, instead of using the JSON chat input, we're going to go over to 
to the schema here and I'm going to use the message that I sent in my email, which I think just happened to be, yeah, it's this text plane, but I have my email signature at the bottom here. So I'm just going to use this right here. And then if I click on test step, let's see what this produces. And it produces a little email here. I'm going to edit this further and then just say, give me the email, no subject. So we just want the text from the email. And there we go. So now we have our HTML of our email responding to our message here. And then we'll come over to send email and then we'll just make the from email. If we head back from our inputs over to the email trigger here, we're going to want to use the delivered to, which is the original email that I'm using here. And then we're going to send that back to my email or whatever email that was sending the message. And then we're just going to want to make sure our HTML, not the subject, we're going to want to put this in the to email. We're going to make the subject Tesla info, but obviously you can pull other variables and use the same ones. Actually, what I can do here is just use the same variable from the email down here. Well, yeah, we'll use the subject right here to reply with the same subject. And then the HTML, we're going to take from the question and answer chain and just put our text inside there like so. And now if we test this step, of course my authentication failed. I had to reset my password and we give this another go. Look at that, node execute successfully and a new email has been sent. And if I check out my email, you'll notice I get a new email from Elon Musk. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Let's set up this workflow. So I'll make sure to save this. So I'll set this up as active so it's all ready to go. And now all we have to do is just test out our email. So I'm gonna send a new email over to that same email I hooked up. And I'm gonna say here, what was Tesla's Q for earnings? And I'll send this, we get this. Hey Mike, thanks for reaching out. If you're looking for Tesla's Q4 earnings, we report a total revenue of 25.2 billion. You get the idea. But it basically responds with our queried message from our vector database inside Pinecone directly back to our email, all using NAN automations. So I'll have links down below to where you can get this exact same workflow. Big shout out to David for putting this template together. I was basically stumped on how Pinecone worked until I found this workflow. And I really just wanted to share my experience and how it works because I thought it was super useful and something I'll definitely be using more of in the future. And with that all being said, make sure to give this video a like if you learned anything. I'd love to hear what kinds of things you want me to automate or showcase next. But if you wanna know how you can use custom tools inside of NAN to do all kinds of crazy cool actions like book meetings and send emails, make sure to check out this video here where I teach you everything there is to know about making custom tools inside of NAN. So I'll see you guys over in that video.